Valerie's a third generation Sikh American, born and raised in California. I've, I've read a bit about Valerie, and there's a comment that she made that I saw. She actually quoted something, one of the Sikh central uh, themes or tenets. In order to realize God and realize yourself, you must act here and now without fear, which I think is a tremendous sentiment and one that she completely acted upon. And without further ado, let me introduce Valerie Carr. I'm here to talk to you today about fear and fearlessness and authenticity. I have come to believe that we come into the world afraid, naked and crying out. We are immediately bundled up and soothed. We are wrapped in story, the story of our mother and father, the story of our country and our religion and our society. And by story, I mean a larger narrative that tells us who we are, where we are, and where we are going. And Valerie, just begin by briefly telling us kind of what brought you to decide to do this after that. Sure. Well, I was 20 years old when 9-11 happened, and I found myself watching the towers fall over and over again between mugshots of a bearded and turbaned Osama bin Laden. And three days later, there was that constant crawling at the bottom of the screen that read, Sikh man killed in hate crime in Mesa, Arizona. His name was Bobir Singh Sodi. Uh, he was someone my family knew, so it was as if an uncle had been murdered. And I, I soon found that he was murdered on September 15th in front of his gas station by a man who called himself a patriot. Um, and so here I am, my family has lived in America for almost 100 years. I feel, I feel deeply, deeply American. Um, and here were people who did not see my community the way that I saw us. Um, and so that spurred the beginning of this epic five-year journey to discover who counts as American crossing the country with my camera. Because as we look at this issue, obviously it affects many, many Americans. It affects all of America. And just give us your thoughts on that as you do the documentary. Yeah, I, I think every single person who's watching right now at home, wherever they are, has had an ancestor who's had to face and, and survive persecution at some point in our history, whether we're, we came on the Mayflower, Native American, Black American, Latino, no matter who we are, um, that's part of our cultural history. Not only that, each person in their own life can remember a moment when they too have felt like they're, they've been an outsider, when they haven't been seen for the way that they see themselves. And I think we tend to have amnesia when we feel comfortable again to forget that we all have a stake in this fight of expanding that circle of who counts as American, who counts as one of us, to include all of us. And what stories, I think, have the power to do is to break down that wall that divides us, to remind us of a time in our own life when we ourselves felt like outsiders, that we needed the strength of our brothers and sisters to draw up that courage to stand for each other, to see ourselves in one another, to fight for that community that we so long to imagine. That is a shared human hope that we can create together. And my message to you tonight is to say that we as Sikh Americans will not fully become Americans simply by telling other people who we are. We will become fully American by participating fully in the American experiment, by recognizing that our struggles are inextricably bound with the African American struggle, as the, as the professor said earlier, with the Japanese American struggle, with the Irish, Catholic, German, with everyone's struggle. Welcome next, a film that is bringing vicious intolerance aimed at innocent people. It's being revealed in a new documentary, as we hear now from entertainment correspondent Brooke Anderson. My name is Valerie. I am an American. I am a Sikh. Filmmaker Valerie Kaur explores bias attacks on Sikhs in her new film, Divided We Fall. The impulse of for fear to drive us to discriminate and to profile others is just there, part of our culture. Cor experienced that prejudice as she traveled the country with her cousin Sonny, who wears a turban. They were mocked by a young man at a train station. Who do you think I am? I don't care. I, ha I have a turban. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Sikh. A Sikh. A Sikh. Not a Sikh. It was the very first time in my life that I began to see myself through the eyes of others who saw me as foreign, as suspect, as not American, as less than human somehow. My professor wears a beard and, and turban like my grandfather. My professor was sitting on a bus when a man at the front of the bus stood up 
turned around, red in the face, pointed at my professor and began yelling, hey, you terrorists, go back to your country, get off this bus, spewing profanities. And my professor has learned to do what he has always done, quiet, pray for the moment to pass. And then something remarkable happened. The other people on the bus began to stand up. The white woman, the Asian girl, the black kid. They all stood up and they took this man's arm and they said, sit down, sit down. You don't know what you're talking about, sit down. And the man sat down. The bus comes to a stop and my professor gets off the bus and the man gets off the bus and the man comes up to my professor and puts out his arm and at this point, I'm waiting for the violence to happen. I know this moment well. My stomach is tight. I'm ready to, to cry. And the man takes my professor's hand and shakes it and says, my granddaughter was on that second plane that went into that second tower. I'm angry. I'm sorry. And what has stayed with me about that story is not necessarily the man's transformation, which is remarkable and hopeful in and of itself. What has stayed with me about that story is the people on the bus. I began to realize that we are the people on that bus. We are the people who have the power to stand up in the most ordinary of circumstances and say and do the most extraordinary things to fight for the kind of country, the kind of community that we believe in. Um, Valerie, let me turn to you. You are a storyteller and a very wise one, given your age. Um, how does your generation see the male-female thing? Is it a given that you have essentially Equality. I think that's a great question. I um, I think that my generation has has arguably grown up as the most diverse generation in the history of the world, the most multiracial, multicultural, multireligious, in a way that makes talk of diversity not something novel, but something that's a, a reality. Just just as Sharon had mentioned. I think that's what, what's different about our generation, this is why I call us the shadow generation, is that we have come of age in the shadow of September 11th where we have been growing up inside a narrative of power that asks us to divide the world into us and them, into black and white, into saved and not saved, and into man and woman. And that these experiences growing up uh, fundamentally press up against this narrative that we are asked to now enter and take as, as our own. And what's, what I think is really promising with the election of Barack Obama now, you know, almost uh, 10 years after 9-11, is that, is that we are emerging out of the shadows, that we are finding within ourselves uh, the strength and the courage to actually enter these institutions of power and exercise our voices, tell our stories in a way that transforms these institutions of power. Um, so that we don't think of man and woman as, as binary, but perhaps gender as plural, that there are multiple ways to exercise, to perform gender, to perform race, to perform religion. And that they're, in fact, you know, they intersect in very dynamic ways that makes the world far more full of possibility than we've ever imagined before.